You got the data. You either collected it or got a ready data set. You have it. What's next? Well, data processing and analysis? Yeah, if you know what to do. But in any case, the first thing worth doing is to get to know the data, to understand what is inside. Here I have a little uh, simplified data set on uh, movie ratings and uh, some info on users who uh, did the, those ratings. Even with this small data set, we need some aid. Uh, the simplest instruments in Excel to uh, handle the data are sort and filter. But uh, let's start with uh, letting the Excel recognize that uh, we are working with the table. For this, just press Ctrl T, or uh, here there is a format as a table, and it automatically defines the range of the table and uh, offers to uh, get the headers automatically. It's not only about appearance, but also about functionality. We uh, got filters here, and also if we scroll down, uh, we get automatically our headers frozen. What we can do here, we, for example, can uh, filter some movie type, for example, let's take adventures, okay, or, for example, we can sort the age. And there are even more opportunities to filter, for example, um, uh, number filters. We can get uh, greater than, between, top 10, above average, custom filters, and we have also special text filters, like, for example, something that begins with some letters or contains some word. And we can uh, get subtotals. Let's, for example, get the average rating. We better use subtotal uh, functions for this kind of tables because it would allow us to uh, hide some rows or to filter out some rows and uh, the result would be reflected in the formula. So we choose here average and then select the range. And here it is average uh, rating for all the movies. And again, if we get, for example, only adventure, here it is. But we can get the same inside, but even faster and more with pivot tables. Let's create one. We insert a pivot table in here. And it automatically again defines the table range and uh, offers to get it to a new worksheet. Now it's empty. Uh, we can break down all the data by uh, movie turner again. And as values, we would like to see the ratings. By default, it shows a sum. Uh, sum in this, uh, uh, in this case, sum doesn't make much sense because uh, we have different number of observations and summing up the rating doesn't get any value for us. So let's change it to average. Then let's first format a number in here. Okay, we can add uh, another value, like for example, we can calculate uh, the number of people who rated a movie. So for this we again need rating, but this time uh, we would not uh, average that, but just count. Here it is. We can always add in other variables here and break down in a new way, so for example we can add gender. And now we can see uh, the same for females and males. And every time you are interested what is exactly inside every number, double click and pivot table will generate you a table uh, with only those observations. To make it visual, let's add a graph. And uh, it's a pivot chart because then it would automatically change when you rearrange the table. We already can see in here that, for example, female uh, users rate a drama much higher than the male users. We can rearrange the data and get different perspective on a graph. Or what we also can do, we can check different age. Now it's uh, pretty complicated. We just have every age that we have in our data. Let's group the age. Let's say from 0 to 80 through 20. 
Okay. And now we have also perspective of uh, how many users from every age group actually rated the movie. And also, for example, if we, uh, not the average rating, but count it. What we practically get is a frequency distribution here, but the number of beans is very low. Or also we can easily convert it into, so let's say, probability distribution here in value field settings. We can show value as percentage of grand total. Now it's percentage of all the ratings. So this is how you can use pivot tables and pivot charts to get understanding of the data and even to preliminary analyze it.